Right now, Jim Bianco joins us with Bianco Research in Chicago with a wonderful overview on the market. Jim, I assume you haven't read the 66 pages of, uh, of uh, Mr. Diamond. It's wide ranging, as you would imagine. Let's look right now at one of the quotes from Jamie Diamond. Let's zoom in on a quote on Zoom. Jim Bianco's lived with Zoom. Lisa Bramlett's has lived with Zoom. I am Zoom free. I'm really pleased uh, to say that. But let's look at Jamie Diamond on Zoom. Most professional learn their job through an apprenticeship model, which is almost impossible to replicate in the Zoom world. Over time, this drawback could dramatically undermine character and culture. Remote work virtually eliminates spontaneous learning and creativity because you don't run into Jim Bianco at the coffee machine. I mean, there it is, old school uh, uh, Jim Bianco. Do you think we return to our offices of old? Uh, sort of. Uh, I'm going to push back on that quote a little bit. Please. I'm going to say, yes, um, it is, you know, human in interaction, human contact is important, but not, I don't think, in the form that Jamie Dimon is suggesting that, you know, you, 10 hours a day in an office, sitting in a little room by yourself, working at a computer in, in a service sector job. I think that we're going to have to rethink what the office is and rethink why we go to the office. We've just shown as an economy over the last year, we can produce the economy just fine, all working remotely. And I agree we need more human contact. Look, I want nothing more than to go to a Wrigley Field game again. But I also recognize that maybe I don't need to go to one of those gigantic buildings in the center of a major city and spend 45, 50 hours a week there as well, too. There's going to have to be a rethink as to what exactly does the office mean. And it sounds like some people are not there yet as far as uh, having that conversation. What is the Bianco creative destruction then, and how do you prosper from it? What is your investment strategy, given what this pandemic has wrought and in the boom economy recovery? I think the biggest thing with the boom economy has been all of the uh, stimulus, uh, you know, the mailing of checks that we've had. We've got the savings rate at a 60-year high. We've got everybody itching to get out. That's what everybody says right now, and I think it's very, very true. And when they do, I think we're going to start to see spending go. That's what everybody says. And then we'll have to have a real conversation about inflation. It's too early to have that conversation about inflation. The base effect of dropping off March and April of last year and seeing the year over year numbers go up a lot is literally going to start next week. And the checks that we just recently mailed out have only been a couple of weeks old. So I think as we move forward, we're going to have a conversation about inflation and whether or not we see it. If we see it, it's going to have to accelerate the Fed. If we don't see inflation, it's going to open the conversation to modern monetary theory and more money being spent at a higher rate than we're already doing it right now. What's the nature of the pickup in inflation that you're looking for? And this is important because we've seen inflation of certain key goods, but what is the important increase in inflation that you need to see to say this is a sign of something different? I think it's probably going to be that companies are going to raise their prices. Look, we've known now for the last 25 years, if you're a manager of a real company, not a Wall Street company, let's define those two, uh, and you raise your price, you raise your price for washing machines or you raise your price for sweaters, you're on the second page of a Google search on lowest to highest price, you don't sell anything, you lose market share. Everybody's been droned into don't ever raise your price because of that uh, consequence. If we get to the point where there's a demand pull that so many people are wanting stuff that we start seeing prices start to be raised, then in Fed speak, we've unanchored inflation and we could then start to talk about whether or not it is actually here for the first time in a quarter century. I think that's a real possibility as we move forward that we could see that unanchoring of inflation. So we're seeing 10 year yields today go down. Uh, they are well down their uh, recent highs, which raises a question of whether they are underpricing this reality that you're talking about. Where could 10 year Treasury yields conceivably go if you see those uh, inflationary pressures that you're talking about? Well, I think they could go higher. Now, I'm not surprised that they're falling right now because they've had a relentless rise for the last several months and have been, you know, oversold in terms of prices and that we're seeing a correction in there. But I also would argue that when interest rates go up, it's neither bullish or bearish for the stock market. It depends on why. If they're going up because the narrative 
right now is we're reopening. We're going to have massive real growth. We're going to have more earnings. That's fine. Interest rates could go up and it won't bother the economy or the financial or the stock market, if you will. But if interest rates are going up because of inflation, and that's a loss of purchasing power, your dollar buys less in a year than it buys now, that's a problem for the economy and for the stock market. And we're going to continue to have that debate. In the meantime, I think rates are going to go higher like they have over the next several months, like they, uh, like they have over the previous several months. And we're going to continue to have this debate whether it's reflation or real growth or inflation. I mean, I hate to say it to James Dimon, uh, Jim Bianco, but the read of the morning is Brian Chapata at Bloomberg, not Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan, where Chapata tears apart the idea of wages aren't going up. Are you seeing wage inflation in Chicago? And to the point, is that really what's going to happen here, a surprise into the end of the year of finally wage inflation gets back to three-ish percent. Yeah, I, you know, it's hard to say whether or not you're seeing it right now, but that's going to be the question as to whether or not you do see wage inflation as we move forward. If you do, then you might see a, a bigger, robust job market because a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines. They don't need to go back to work. They are being, they've been given stimulus checks. They've been given an extra kicker in unemployment insurance. So they're sitting around waiting until all of that runs out. If we do see wage inflation, I think then, like I said, it would, it would fast forward everything like the Fed and the thinking in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, it's too early to say that we've seen it. Uh, right. But I think that's going to be the second half of the year question. <clears throat> Jim Bianco, thanks so much. Go Cubs. Bianco Research in Chicago uh, joining us this morning. Lisa, I think this is really